Yes, please. And you got to hold it close so they can all hear you. Hello, hello, hello. Really close. It's on. Hold on. I think I got the problem. Mine is a red light. It's got to be on. Listen, now say something again, Ken. Say it again. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, I'm here. Yeah, there we are. Good. All right. Okay. So, how are you guys? How was your day like with the fans? Always wonderful in Germany. Always. Great fans. They're, they're very friendly and um, it's just, just a great, great group of people. Every time I come here, it's always a, 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 a wonderful time. I don't know what it is. I, I'm not quite sure if it's being in another country. I'm, I'm not quite sure what it is, but Germany is always, and I'm not saying it's too smooth, I, I could give a damn less. But I'm just saying, you, you, Germany just has the, some of the nicest fans in terms of their attitudes. You know, when they come up, they're very polite, they're very giving. They, it's, a nice, it's, a, it's a nice event and a nice time for me. So I don't care if it's not about that. It's, it's the way you are. I guess you brought up that way. I don't know. So How you applaud you? yourselves. For you, David. Uh, yeah, it's been a great day. The uh, the people I met have been very sweet and warm. Uh, it was like a lot of the folks I met today I have known on Facebook. We've been Facebook friends for years in some cases. So they were like they were like movie stars to me. I only see them in the media. It was like meeting Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie in person, uh, and that was that was uh, a real treat. And um, I had a great time. Thank you all very much for. For your hospitality. So of course we want to talk about what are our fans like and uh, there's no denial in that they are big Dawn of the Dead fans so can you tell us how it is to be like or to, that you were a part of something so big that's so so influential to this day? What do you mean? Okay <clears throat> well I gave Dawn of the Dead too little respect in the beginning, it was for me. It was only half a day's work. David Early and I uh, did our scene in the newsroom in about half a day. I don't think I even got lunch. And uh, the pay, the pay, as I remember, was fifty dollars. David said he got a hundred. I'm not sure what was going on there. Um, and I thought, ah, you know, it's only George. I, I had known him as a a maker of documentaries and commercials, and he was. Uh, known as a brilliant editor, the best editor anywhere. Uh, but we didn't think he could actually direct a movie. I, well, we knew about Night of the Living Dead, but you know, could have been a fluke. So I didn't have any respect for this this movie in the beginning. In fact, I, my favorite job that week was not the shoot of Dawn of the Dead. It was being a Winker, which was the mascot of a, a, a hamburger chain called Winkies. Uh, and I, I would put on this like 30 pounds of orange fake fur looking like a Muppet, go out to the hamburger places and pat the kids on the head and tell them to eat lots of hamburgers, kids, they're good for you. That was my best job that week. I probably made 200 off of that. <laughs> um, so I had no respect until around the year 2000, maybe before that, David Early called me and said he had been invited to a horror convention in Cleveland and had, uh, had made a lot of money signing autographs. I was shocked. <laughs> I had no idea you could make money signing autographs. <laughs> but here I am, and I am grateful to George and to David Early and to you. How about you, Ken? Well, God. I, I read the script, and at the time, I was a SAG actor, Screen Actors Guild, I was a in the union. And I found out that this was a non-union show. Uh, and I read it and I said, my God, this will never play Kawam. It is so, it is so, you know, it's a slasher movie, it's in color, I'd seen Night of the Living Dead, I knew Dwayne Jones, and it was in black and white, and I said, this is in color, they're gonna be eating guts, they're gonna be slashing, cutting off heads. I said, this, 
there's no way that my union's going to see this film and call me to, on, uh, to, to terms on this film. So I said it will never play South America. I guarantee you, the United States will not let it inside the country, right? Like they banned it here, I thought it would be banned in the United States. So I said, ah, I can do this, okay? So, shot the film, and Salah Hassan, you know Salah, you remember Salah as the distributor? Oh, yeah. the, the, the Richard and Salah distributed it. Yes. Right. Salah Hassan and Richard Rubenstein distributed this thing so well that it played everywhere in America. Well, you know it played every, all over the world, of course. And Zombie was the, uh, the name of, because Dario had the European rights. So it played in every drive-in, every theater. I don't know if you people know Manhattan, New York. Does anyone know Manhattan? It played at the Winter Garden on 50th Street and 7th Avenue, also on the Embassy at 61st Street, 2nd and 3rd Avenue. These are major downtown, very plush, uh, upscale, very upscale movie houses. And this is where it opened in New York. And uh, they, they played drive-ins everywhere across the country. And before I knew it, uh, this thing, it, it was, I, I was getting, People talking to me from in airports and uh, walking down the street and looking at me and pointing at me and I said this is pretty big and I I had forgotten about my union you know and I said well let me follow this and I went out to California with it and about three months being in California four months I get a call from the Screen Actors Guild board of directors <laughs> and they said Mr. Forey we'd like to speak to you. And I said, what about? And they said, it's about this film that you did. And I said, oh God. I said, what film's that? I knew, but I'm just gonna, what film's that? This dawn, this dawn of the, dawn of the, and this is exactly how the woman said, dawn of the dead? I said, yes, okay. So I went down and I said, what am I gonna tell these people? And I decided, I gotta tell them the truth. So I told him, I said, listen guys, I was, I, I'm working off Broadway at the time, I was doing, you know, working on stage, I, I did a few television things, of, uh, I did Bingo Long Traveling All-Stars and Motor Kings and a Kojak before that. I said, I needed the money. I said, I didn't think it would play this country. <laughs> I said, I, I thought it was scot free, I won't do it again. They said, all right, can we have a few minutes? They let me out of there um, uh, uh, while they talked. They brought me back and said, don't do it again, and they let me off. But that was, I had no idea that it would be as popular as it, as it is. I didn't think it would have the legs that it has. Um, it's, it's, it's been, a, it's been a, a, a heck of a ride, I, I must say. It's, it's been kind of crazy, because, you know, you, you look at something like that, and a month ago, maybe a month and a half ago, I played on one of the late night shows in, in, in LA. And I was channel surfing and all of a sudden I caught it. And I watched it. I got caught, you know, after you're three or four minutes into it, you're into it. You know, it's two o'clock in the morning, it doesn't matter. And I, I said, it still holds up. I went to Cheyenne, Wyoming, and they had a special screening of it in Cheyenne, Wyoming. I don't know if you know what Cheyenne, Wyoming is, but it's kind of a, a uh, what would you call that, uh, backwoods, uh, uh, western kind of town, not much there. Sehr weit weg, also sehr unbekannt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so that. <laughs> so, and, you know, I'm, I'm they're going to, they're going to uh, uh, play the film, and then I have to get up and talk. And I'm in the back, and I'm thinking, oh my God, this is so campy, it's dated, it's not, you know, they, I'm going to have to run out of here with, with my, my, my coat over my head. You know, I thought, this is not going to work. And I sat there in the, you know, in the back, and I watched it along with the audience. And I was stunned there, it, it still, I was still entertained, it was good, it held my attention. Uh, I've seen it a hundred times and still I, I was thoroughly entertained by it. I said, well this is, this is a unique film, it just, no matter what, no matter how many years, it's been 36 someone told me? Is it 36 years? 79 to now, is that 36? No, that's all on 30, you're going through. 30? 
35, 30, 30, 30. So who's the math major out here? <laughs> six, six, 36 years, 30, 36 years later and it still, it still holds up. So I had no idea it would be this popular. I, I didn't know that so many people were, were, were fans. I, as a matter of fact, I didn't know there was a fan base. I had no idea. I did my first con convention. Fangoria called me to headline with uh, Clive and these guys, you know, in, in New York. And it says, well, I'll make this quick because that's taking too long. I'm going to be quick. They, they wanted me to headline and uh, I'll, I'll come to do a show. And I, I never, I didn't know anything about conventions. They called me. They said they paid me a certain amount of money and they would provide uh, uh, photos for me to sign. And I would do sign, uh, sign photographs for about an hour and a half, two hours. I would uh, do 45 minutes on stage with an audience and the rest of the time was mine. And they would bring me to New York. I'm, I spent a lot of time in New York, 11 years I lived there. I said, this is great in July, which is the time I wanted to be in New York. Uh, they have a, a thing called the Jazz Bowl. I said, I will see friends that I haven't seen in 20 years there. Perfect time for me to be in New York for this event. And I said, whatever this is, I don't care, I'm going. And I didn't know there was a dealer's room. I had no idea. And it, was, it surprised me to see two or 300 people in the audience wanted to listen to me about this film. And it's been that way ever since. Um, I've traveled all over the world and all over the United States and I have fans everywhere, people who love this film and, and, and it's been, they've been touched by it. It's generational, they pass it down to their grandchildren, their, children, their grandchildren pass it down to their children. It's, it's, been a, it's, been a, it's been a heck of a ride, it's been great. It's been absolutely a surprise and totally, totally um, um, one of the nice things in my life, I must say. So that's, that's what I think. I think have I, have that's, I good. that's good. You're good. <laughs> You're all good. Um, David, can you tell me? Um, now people are still into zombies, especially with The Walking Dead. Is there something that, you know, because Dawn of the Dead still has the fascination, and not only because of the zombies, is there something, and vice versa, what both of the, the movie and the show with the zombies could have learned from each other, or what's, what do you think is the zombie fascination for people? Still, from 36 years ago till now, that zombies are still so successful. Yeah, well, for one thing, I think we as human beings are fascinated by horror because it helps us to feel our fears and to deal with them. Uh, I, uh, it, 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 the zombies, I think, are in the air now because apocalypse is in the air. There are so many threats to the survival of uh, the human race, uh, the, the well-being of the planet, uh, that we feel the fear because we read about it, from global warming uh, to uh, the, the jihads in the Middle East, uh, to nuclear proliferation, to all kinds of new threats with, uh, with robots and, and uh, uh, re medical research and so on. Uh, we, we know about these threats and we need to deal with them. And watching zombies happen and watching uh, people deal with them, I think, helps us to face our own fears a little more it, 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 on, a, on a better level, I think. I think that's what it is. Okay. How about you, Ken, for a last word? You know, I, you know, I, God, that's, that's such a difficult question because you know, I, I, I come from the era where, and, and I'm sure, sure David does, where it was Abbott and Costello uh, and meet, meet Frankenstein and the zombie. That was the first zombie I think I've ever, in, in, in film for me. Bride of Frankenstein. Bride of Frankenstein, yeah, but, but then they had a zombie in Abbott and Costello. And that was the first zombie I've ever seen in film. And I said, wow, that's, that's, that's interesting. And then there's the, always the Day of the Dead what the people in Spain or uh, Mexico celebrate, which is kind of a strange kind of, uh, I, uh -huh, somebody, somebody <laughs> likes that, huh? <laughs> then there's the, um, there's also the Haitians who create, the, 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 I think it's the only known culture where they've really created a zombie, and they've done it with, chemo I think it's the putterfish, put, 
puffer, puffer fish. Kugelfish. Is it pooper? Kugelfish. It's in German. Kugel. You mean the one that blows up? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they, there's some kind of poison that they have and they use that Kugelfish. to... Kugelfish. In some kind of scientific uh, uh, mixture, uh, some, you know, chemical mixture with, the, with this fish and with this um, uh, toxins. And they were able to create a zombie in, ha in Haiti. And that's, that's as... as I think that's as close as anyone's come to making this really a reality. Why people enjoy it? I think people enjoy it because George Romero made a black and white film in 1968 that shocked the world. I think that that film, no one had ever seen anything like that before. Uh, it wasn't, you know, you didn't see a car of people burning up and people reaching in and grabbing the entrails and eating them. You didn't see that. You know, no one at, at, at 1968, we didn't have that kind of, those kind of films come, coming across the board. And I think that kind of set the, the, the tone for what was to come. And then not only Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, and all of George's thing, but every other zombie film that's been made, I think they took their inspiration, I think we were inspired by George Day and Dwayne Jones specifically, because Dwayne Jones was a hero at that point. He was an African American who was, it was rare to have an African American as a hero in the film. I think Sidney Poitier did Lily, Lilies of the Field. Uh, maybe Harry Belafonte did uh, Black Narcissus or something like that, but it was rare. Very rare that you saw this, and all of a sudden, George comes out with this black and white, made for twenty-five thousand dollars, a thirty thousand dollar film. You could tell it was low budget, and nonetheless, it got distribution everywhere. Uh, people saw it everywhere, and everyone who—I'll leave you with this—everyone who saw that film saw Dwayne Jones and that performance knew that he was the lead, knew that he was the guy that was in control, and at the end, the only person still alive, and everyone thought that he was gonna get out of there. At that last moment, he's gonna open the door, rescue was coming, here come the police, here comes the state troopers, here comes the National Guard, they're gonna save Dwayne, and he's our hero, he made it through, our guy, he opens the door, and come blam, <laughs> and that was it. And everyone, the entire world, a big sigh of regret. And I think that set the pattern for those who followed. I think, uh, uh, and I think when George came out with Dawn of the Dead and then uh, Day of the Dead followed that, I think that everyone just said, hey, this is a pretty good, you know, we, we, we love these films, we love zombies, we are, uh, uh, Romero's work was so, so uh, I guess, Impressive, and not only impressive, but certainly, um, I, I, I guess, I guess you, you, you get a lot of kudos for for, for a twenty-five thousand dollar film that affected so many people. Yeah. And I think that that's what 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 motivated so many filmmakers to go and try to to make their own zombie films, and they're still making them for twenty thousand, or five thousand, or ten thousand dollars in the basements, and still coming out with them. We got zombie films. There's one every week, probably every every month. Somebody's coming out with a zombie film. If it's not major, which which some major ones have come out, like Walking Dead, as you mentioned, World War Z, a few of the what was the other? One? There was another one, World War Z, Walking Dead. What was the one with Woody Harrelson? Zombie Land. Zombie Land came out, and and and, uh, and if you if you look at the major ones that have come out, and then you and then you look at the ones that, that just go straight to DVD, then you look at the ones that people are making that just sit on the shelves, you know, in the, in the kitchen. You've got a, a slew of people that were influenced, that that have some kind of connection with uh, this kind of I guess this kind of genre, you know, not only horror but also zombies and they were, uh, I don't know any other way that you can say it's affected. I think David's answer was, 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 was right on though. I think it is a part, part of uh, human beings since we had the scare in the 60s with um, Kennedy and the, the nuclear uh, thing with Cuba and that kind of thing. I think people have always been afraid of what would happen if there is a, 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 what an apocalypse. And certainly the apocalypse would be people dying, 
resurrecting, coming back, guiding people, they're biting people, they're dying. So I think the apocalypse kind of thing has always has been with my generation, which was that generation in the 60s, uh, early 60s with Kennedy. It was that 60, that had to be 63 or something like that when Kennedy and, and Cuba had 63 and something like that. So I think after that, you know, we're always looking for the boogeyman around the corner, what's going to kill us. What radiation is going to kill us? Are we going to be bombed? Is it the atomic bomb? What diseases were coming out? Because a lot of diseases were starting to... to, to and so I think that uh, you, you put those combinations together and you put George Romero and, 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 and uh, Night of the Living Dead, Dead and then you have just a, a launching uh, a point for, for, for all, all that followed. So that's you my answer. You've got some interesting thoughts, you two. So it's all good. Yes. And we like it. So. Uh, the fans are welcome to say hi at your booth and talk are to you. Are they going to ask, ask questions now? Michael Masson's up here for 20 hours. I don't know. Well, it's because... <laughs> I want to see who's got a question out here. Someone we has have nothing a question. to do out there. <laughs> Anybody got a question? Can we get a question? Can we get a question? I want them, but they're so shy today. Don't be shy. Come on, okay, get it up. Over. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. It's working. Yeah. Uh, first of all, it's, it's strange that you touch on that there's so much zombie stuff around now because right. when I was a kid, when I first watched like Dawn of the Dead, I thought I was the only fan. But being here, I can see like <laughs> not. There's so many others. Um, my question is from Dawn of the Dead. I read somewhere that at the end everyone was meant to die. Was this true? Were those scenes filmed? Um, and are you glad that it changed and you got to stay alive? Can you tell me a bit about that at the end of the film? Yeah, we, we, Galen was supposed to die. Uh, she was supposed to die in a helicopter. I think she was supposed to commit suicide by raising her head up in the uh, propellers and chop her head off. So they, they did a test run of that with a dummy just to see if it worked. I think they shot the test run just to see if it worked, just to, just to see if they could um, match it and that kind of thing and see if they wanted, wanted to shoot that with Galen. They, George and I, as as far as, you know, something that's 36 years ago, sometimes you lose the, the, uh, uh, the facts. You know, you kind of, you, someone says something. I've, I've been confused about a lot of the, you know, some of the things I say, I say, well, George and I had a discussion and we said we would rather go for the up ending. I think that's what's ha what happened. But I've been fooled because I've had other panels with, with some of the Sabini, George, um, David, Galen, all of those people, and they would say something, and I say, "Damn, did that happen?" Oh no, <laughs> that's not what I remember. Or oh, I've been telling, I, I, I'm trying to think which which it was, but there was there was something in Dawn of the Dead that was so. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think it was the gun to my head, but there was something about the. The, the this this ending with Galen and, and what she shot, what she I mean, what she killed, what's her head, and I I, you know, I heard George describe it as something else, and I said, oh my God, I've been saying the wrong thing for 20 years now. So so I don't I don't uh, I, I think that basically I know that they put the dummy in the head in the um, helicopter uh, propellers and they shot that and then George and I as far as I know <laughs> George may say he thought of it himself or he discussed it with someone else I, but I think that we discussed it and uh, we, we decided to go for the the more up ending we said something's got to live in this 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 uh, this crazy film because everything dies and everyone dies so we thought someone should live and I think Gale, that's why Galen and I left were, were chosen to, to survive it Thank you for the question. So I'm so sorry, guys, but you guys are gonna be back on stage, and I will have them ask more questions over the weekend. When is this? Huh? When these people are, are these, these people finished? We're out of here. He has to. He also has to go to his us photo us shoot. There's people wanting to take pictures and about, get I got, I got about No, I can go on forever. Come on. I still love you, even if you hate me. Okay. All right, people, give it up for David Crawford and Ken Corey.